every day we are meeting attitude last satsang you see the the importance of saying that because everyone the mind is always promising yeah maybe tomorrow i come and da 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 like this so no you be so present that this is your last chance last satsang that attitude i like from you then i will be able to um to get the most you get the most we get the most out of it okay okay all right you you i don't know what to say but i i feel that um it was so strong the satsang yesterday do what the satsang yesterday ah. was strong for me you can turn this off no yeah um in what way is strong for you and it, it's strong showing good that or strong bad good good because okay, it's tell showing us that so. even before you pointed me out that day there was i was already coming with a really strong sense of failure ah yes yes you know inside of me and i was with it yes just today i recognize also something and i want to give to anybody to everyone to put it to you that uh, sometimes there is a deep unrecognized message inside your being and that you're going to fail many people have it uh, some people have it for a short time and then they outgrow this seed message and the thing is it's not easily detectable but it is discernible for me because i see it's as though you're living a very apologetic life like apologizing for your existence and i see this feeling in you and it's not what i know to be true so i'm pointing it out it's not just you and if this message is inside you unrecognized you spend a lot of your time trying to prove yourself to the world but you have not proved yourself to you and so by speaking i'm exposing it that it doesn't belong with you it's a foreign body we don't know how it came in but i'm not it's not a therapy class i'm not looking for where it came in through what door but in speaking like this give a chance for you to 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 see that uh, perhaps uh, perhaps there is a sort of message inside my system that is a uh, very much uh, uh well lacking in in faith in what is being shared what is being offered so even really at the very altar you are in apology at the place of freedom you're still in apology walking on the street you're like a prisoner in your relationship you is not good enough and that is not the truth <laughs> and actually truth is greater than even good enough and not good enough so these are the messages that come with a life of personhood but it's also wrapped lots of mixed messages once you've taken that message you can pick up a lot of other messages cousins and aunties and stuff to this other message that uh, you're not good enough and so whatever you hear it's not able to override that it's as though that there is some deep reflex inside to cringe every time i point to you it's like something's been exposed and it's been protected and it's been protected not by the truth of yourself but by the untrue self or sense of self the very one who says i'm struggling baba ji please help me is that this one is also not you it's a well accepted voice a version of self that is not true 
and your time in coming here is to come to a clear recognition of that and either it gets burped out or you come more importantly to recognize that you are earlier than that. This message I've been sharing with you, it's not been allowed to come in because it's met with this resistance like, you know, but you know, it's so hard for me, Babaji, and my mind is saying this and my mind is like, your mind is your boss. Your mind is saying it's only can, it, it can only be appealing for your attention, which readily you give it because you're already. He cannot come to someone and with any kind of power who is awake to the truth of themselves. He will come and knock at the door that he might be received, you see that voice. So when you say it was a sad, strong satsang yesterday, what do you mean? Just clarify now. I asked, good strong or bad strong? And you said, good strong. Okay, carry on from this for me. Because it feels like it's releasing me from something that I have not detected well. And I, I was detecting this voice for a long time, and I was just not listening. Like, I would listen. I know how much I would listen to it. Yes. And what I would do is just not engage or even feed it. You say observe it with detachment, but I would actually more like look away from it. You see, what there is actually in you is uh, the Self, is consciousness, which is able to manifest into personhood, because the person is also a mode of consciousness. It also goes by the name I. I, person, I, consciousness, I, God, I, absolute, all connection. But when it extends out into personhood, then it's like it's, it's, uh, it's going to experience a lot of turbulence, insecurity, all of that. So something has caused us to extend as far out into personhood, and then all that comes in the realm of personhood, now you must use to find your way back. To your original nature, which is not elsewhere placed from you, not in time and space, but in the subtlety of your own being, why you came here. So from what I'm sharing with you, if you listen, you'll see, but actually it's true, because at whatever it is that's been arising through my mind or the senses from any region of time, from past or present or projected future, all of this is stuff that they are tourists. They come and they may have stopovers or whatever. Some is applying for residency, which you offer them at some level. But generally, they are on the move. And they are witness to be on the move. But perhaps you are not aware that every visitor has had to leave you. If they don't leave you and they are not welcome, they are a squatter, no? You want to have squatter in your house? No. You can invite for a night or so, but when you see they are not the good company they promised to be, then you have to be able to send them on their way. Now if they tell you, no, we're not going, how much are they redecorating the room? <laughs> what are you going to do? All of this to test your resolve and to test your faith and to test your being established in your heart, you see. At a, a little bit on from this, maybe a matter of uh, sitting deeply with it, it could be a matter of days or weeks or months even, you are regaining your power, that uh, they, they cannot tell you who you are anymore. You have cut off those ears, they, they cannot hear that anymore. Because you've grown in a deeper strength. Now your ears are for listening more deeply in you. Okay. Thank you, Virgin. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm very grateful for your words um, when you were talking about the beliefs um, of not being good enough. You're not being good enough. Yes. Yes, yes. So 
Mm. I come forward despite of this fear and this shyness. These are states that we have identified with over some time. I'm not blaming, you know, just saying, it catch you just like you don't go out looking for the flu. <laughs> you understand? They will come from wherever, and we're not looking to try and see where they come from, because that's another kind of drama. We don't need to go there. But my starting point is that whatever it is that even you are speaking of now, hmm, there's a, it's, you are behind it, looking at it, reporting about it. You see? Can you report without identity? You see? Yes, on the one side there's a report, and on the other side I feel strongly in my heart to, to, to meet you, to just, yes. just came, come without yeah. my identity. And yes, it's much easier than your mind might tell you. Because there's a place within you that I'm pointing to where you don't have to meet me. I, we are, we're there. You see, but uh, this, the play that happens, uh, that represents the sense of yourself in time and space, and uh, yeah, this is happening, and it's building up a file of what your life looks like. Yes, and, and it's holding me back, so... It holds everybody back, <laughs> even when it makes you feel you're going forward. It holds you back from awakening to the truth of yourself. In a way, you may be ahead of those who have not recognized it, who will misread it to be, yeah, I'm sailing. Whoa. You may be ahead because actually you are coming to a place you can't bear much of it. It's making such mess. And then when you maybe have some space to hear what I'm showing you, what I'm telling you is so simple. Because it is there already. It's not even a skill that you need to develop necessarily, but an exercise that you look. Because all these things, they are visitors, they come. But every time they come, they have they command almost your full attention. So much so that maybe you can't even look after your kids, not able to go to your work because they're just uh. anybody know this type of thing? A regular visitor or now and again visitor that it paralyzes your functioning and your attention is a, a bit imprisoned by it. So today we're gonna all this is gonna have to go. But I need your permission yes. and your cooperation to yes. look. You understand? Yes. Because none of these things came only by trickery they come. Because of uh, uh, what you may say mm, uh, some confusion about your real place. And so you carry on now, working for the Mafia, doing his work for yourself. He says, no, he doesn't have to, because you know, he's, he, he's behind the scenes smoking a cigar, watching you, running around, beating yourself up. And so this feeling of this, uh, you know, yeah, but I am, um, you know, because I find that it's cutting my life. Well, some of that voice, it comes from the... because every, even the ego is connected to the Self at some point. But I'm redirecting your energy to, to the place that's never left you. Actually, it is not it and you. It is you. You are it. But somehow that perfect harmony has been somehow camouflaged. That's all that can happen. It cannot destroy it. It can only hide. Your, the reality of yourself cannot be destroyed. Anybody tell you oh, it is going to be destroyed? Yeah, you, you can destroy the, your, your life and its function. Uh, you can do all kinds of st things. Darkness can come in. But it cannot destroy your essence. And satsang is to bring you back to conscious awareness of your essence, not as an object of perception. And even in your ignorant state, it's there. But you don't look, you're looking from another. It's like you're here, but you're living like you're here. And, yeah, nah, 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 nah. and here you never visit here. But here cannot, because without this, this is not. But still, with or with this, with or without this, this is still here. So that's the, the simple um, diagram of uh, your being. 
I heard you saying that um, your the person is so tiny compared to the truth you are, yeah. and this opened up so much space inside. Yes, yes, it just revealed the space that that is there. Like you know, I heard them say, "I'm not very scientific orientation." They say that you know we are living in maybe a fraction of percentage of our potential. I don't know if people mean by that the potential of your creative uh, outpouring or the potential of how amazing you can do to create things or just amazing in who you are. I don't think they're talking about that yet. What you can do, because we all want to get some, use it to get something, and still it will still be something phenomenal. But to realize uh, yourself, not to learn, not to know in this kind of artificial, that's what I call artificial intelligence, actually, is ego knowledge, but to be fully established again, so to speak, no? in your original nature which is all the time you are going to find out it, but it's here. The mind will put it like, whoa, you have to give up a thing up, go live in the Himalaya cave for six months. It will put all this and it may catch you even with that. So where is it? That which is your natural being. Because once we have taken the name of personhood, it is on a mission to conquer whatever its projections are of the world it wants to attain. And even if it could attain the whole world, it still will not be ultimately satisfied. You will become jealous of another one who is conquering another world. That is the nature of ego. So now, having said that, no. All this stuff. Some people ask, "How can I stop it? How can I stop my mind? How can I? How can I? You know, be free of it?" Some people tell, "Yeah, they're going to brainwash you." Some people say, "I very much want to brainwash actually, <laughs> if I could get one." But uh, I'm saying, don't worry about all of this. No detergent necessary. Your looking, allow whatever it is that comes up. You can go and sit any time. You don't have to plan what should come, because it comes anyway. The first thing, before you pick up anything at all, take a moment just to let go, at least have the attitude of letting go, of that I can perceive, the functioning of perceiving is going on, but that doesn't mean that there should be attachment to the things you perceive. Now that may sound easier to say, because in the moment some things will come that just they're just like this, like a reflex in you. It just reignites identity with it. Still, it's phenomenal, and still you must be the one who perceive it. But there, because you have not exercised your centering in your seeing, the mind-oriented self quickly dismisses it. And that's why I say, there can appear to be a power functioning in you that is not in support of your freedom. Yes or no, you see it or not. It's very easy distraction, so you say, distract, I'm distracted. And it, you know, you're going for this, and look here, it gives you a lollipop, and you go. Because that's what catch you each time. Like that. So we're just breaking these things down into chewable pieces, no? There's come a time very soon when singularly or collectively you will recognize what that is and just no. If you feel that you are someone who has been accumulating uh, this account of negativity and now you have to go and correct every one of them, that would be torture then you, you, of course, could not believe in God. You say, How can you let me do that now? I have to come back all on my own. I can't remember what I did. And I've got to correct those as well. So I say, listen, forget about it. Don't worry. 
you start here at the place where you can see that somehow uh, uh, what what are the things that catch you? What are the things that normally catch you? How do you mean it catch like me? that that pull you into into identity? Because what you're suffering from is not the things, but the identity with them. Because someone else's problem don't trouble you, but is the identity with that, and uh, and feeling oh I don't want to be like this, no. And again, you own that I that is suffering that. And I'm saying, is that all the space that's available to you? Is there any more space? Is totally claustrophobic with wrong identity? In fact, what, what is catching me, mm. this is very old. This is mm -hmm. old stuff. Mm -hmm. This mm. is mostly not something... You know why? Because that me that's being caught is old stuff. It's not the stuff. The stuff is stuffy, but the, the identity keeps riding with it, you see. And I'm not pointing, I'm just pointing that out. You are aware, no? That when I stop and I say, yeah, yeah, I don't want to hear about that stuff. I don't want a list of your things. But whatever they may be, recognized or not, it is still from here that you can say, you can comment about it. Even your commentary about it, you are not. Can you see this thing? Yes. So, what is the simple thing I am saying? Having said these things, what is the, the core pointer? That you don't have to remember, oh, Babaji said six points, first point. No, no. What is the core message is what, that you can take from this? That works for you. Not getting identified with anything. Okay, not getting identified with is powerful. Can you? <laughs> you smile, <Sometimes>. smiling. <laughs> eh? Say, say. Sometimes yes, and yes. sometimes I'm catching myself, but I'm not. Yes, yeah, sometimes, sometimes there's space in that. It's okay. A sense is just uh, realistic. Sometimes you feel you get caught again, and there you go. Then you, in the moment you catch it, something dismounts from that. It's like this; it happens. And then you may experience ah oh, space, and then <gasps> failure, and then space again, <gasps> tight, and then space again, and then <gasps> space again. Space, <gasps> tight space. Stuff like this, it can flush out like that. Something can be generational. It can be there a long time. But the remedy is still the same. If you are not identified with it, cuts the juice to that, it has no history more to form with you. Okay? And we are very interested in this subject because it's very strong in our world of subject object relationship, me and my mind, me and my life. But greater than that is only abiding in this. Don't set out to solve problems. You just keep watching that you're watching and don't identify. Just this. Just this. Okay? Sometimes people ask, I will say, This is my work. My work is just this. Here. Out here. Just watching this, when you can. And you find that it may seem intermittent for a while, that you are doing, and then you think that work takes you away, and you realise it doesn't. It's all happening in this. You follow? Can you all follow? Yes. That's great. When will it be activated? I just felt to say that um, something often feels like this is too simple. It's mm -hmm. too, too natural. Like yeah. I have to do something more. Mind will say it. Yeah. Can't be that. 
that's just some kind of psychological trick. Life is much more intense you know, to get the bull by the horns, you know, or the, or the nuts, you know, to catch him there. Okay, so this thought comes, ah, it's, it's, it's so simple. And then what is the response to that then? Sometimes there's belief, and then it feels like I have to, to, to really like, okay, make effort and. Um, In a way, the mind is half true. Yeah. It is very simple. We can tell you that because you're set up for a big adventure. You say it's too simple, you know. That's a little psychological tidbit. It's okay, then. But you got real work to do. This is your real work to do. Yes. And so in these expressions, there's some honesty. <laughs> Because I tell you, the psychological self is full of tricks. Mm -hmm. And that psychological self is playing as you. It's got a lot of techniques. And the simplicity of being is not attractive when you have that, that pulse inside to do, to, 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 to capture, to, to conquer. To achieve. Mm. Thank you. What I ask of you something that what you hear apply. Because it has to be proven in you. It has to combust into spirit in you. So everything you believe and keep here, it will go, because this is phenomenal. It is not the library of God's words. It has to be baptized here in your heart. As long as your intention is for this and you are striving, all help and grace will come to you. You see, and I'm not speaking only about future. I'm speaking as of now. Like that. So I bless this in you that whatever it is that is yearning inside you to just be fulfilled, not in accordance with your mind's idea of how it should be, but just like yes, knowing that whatever life God has to give you is good every part of it. You see, and not pick and choose what you think is in agreement with your own projections or ideas. If that is what you are open to, bless you in this moment, and onwards from this, and unfadingly in you, by the grace of God. And let's not get too much into talking about it. Make our talking and our contemplation be to be as established in it, to be established in it. I remember one man who came here and he was telling me he was sitting right here somewhere and he was saying, you know, I just I love it, I love it so much. I love to sit and I love I love the feeling when I sit down and I I said, No, 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 don't don't love that so much. Do it. And fall in love with that which it reveals in you. Don't just fall in love with the practice. It's good to appreciate the practice, to value it, to bring your whole heart to it. But it's what is revealing in you. Hmm? To remove the duality in you. Not that to remove the duality in the world. Duality is not a sin. The fact that we pray is duality. That you think of yourself is duality. But uh, that you find uh, the unicity in the multiplicity. And the stillness in the movement, and the oneness inside the many, is all happening in you. You don't have to tell anyone. You see, sometimes even the animals are coming. Sometimes animals are coming to satsang. Not all of them. You don't see all the dogs coming, all the cats. Some of them come just like people. 
and they don't understand English. <laughs> they all understand Portuguese, but they still come because that's not their language field, heart power. They respond and feel the space in you hmm? resonates with the space in them. They know us because of peace and love. Not doctrines and great concepts, just quiet, peaceful presence. Thank you, thank you, thank you.